Hello and welcome to another edition of Mailbag. What is Mailbag? Well, Mailbag is a feature of the channel where you guys leave lots of comments on the channel and I attempt to answer those comments or if I can't answer those comments, I throw it out to you guys who have more knowledge on some of this stuff than I do. So, let's get into the first Mailbag of this session. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are. And consider becoming a Patreon. Next one comes from David Bone in response to uh, call Poly61 did not come with MIDI. Roland U20 needs work. Mailbag I did in November 2023. And David writes, Hi. The floppy disk for the Korg T series, is the Korg able to load PCM samples or is it just batch information? And that's a very good question because a lot of people kind of fail with this. Um, anyway, if you have a Korg T1 or don't have a Korg T1, Basically, a Korg T1, T2, and T3 can format disks into two different types of disk. Type 1 is a program and sequencer disk, and Type 2 is a PCM type disk. Um, and this disk can write 512 kilobits, yes, I am said kilobits, of PCM data together with the programs and combinations that make use of the data into the T1. Um, so you could use a DSM format, which is another Korg device, uh, which was a sampler device, uh, to load sample data into Korg T1 and then build your own programs thereon. Um, and if you've got, say, the um, the Rex T RAM card, yes, the, the Rex T RAM card, uh, you can do pretty much the same thing. That's the whole idea of the Rex T RAM card is you can load samples in. Um, but I have to be honest and say, I have bought a Rex T RAM card. I have used it very, very briefly, and then I kind of packed it away. In fact, I came across it the other day um, when I was I brought it back here, thinking I'll do some stuff with it and have yet to do it because it's been far too cold out here. Um, so I haven't done anything, but I do intend to actually do some videos about the Rex T RAM card. Um, Anyway, you could build your own programs, PCMs, co combis, off the data that you loaded in. So I hope that answers the question. You have to you you have to create the disk type two, and a lot of the program disks that you get from uh, third parties for the T1 or T2, T3 are these program PCM programs combis disks, as opposed to the PCM. Uh, sorry, the program sequencer disks. Okay, so they have two different purposes. And in some instances, you, what you need to do is you need to load the programs, combis, combis and PCMs into the, into the machine before you then load the sequencer data into the machine. Okay, hope that makes an awful lot of sense because sometimes when I say this thing, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sitting there about thinking, I'm not sure this does make a great deal of sense, but that's kind of reality. That's how it works. Because you've got to remember, these things didn't have a lot of memory. They were fantastic. What they did with the amount of memory they had on these devices back in 1990, which is when these, these things were being actively used. I'm saying these things because I'm pointing down there because that actually is my T1. It's in its case just under the camera um, because um, I bought it back to do this stuff with a T, with a T card. Um, and I haven't, so it is actually sitting there in its case, all nice and protected at the moment. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, these things. I hope that helped answer the question. The thing about living by the sea is you get seagulls going squawk, 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 squawk. And at the moment we seem to have a lot of seagulls flying over the house. And that's what you can probably hear in the background. Anyway. Back to the next question that comes from uh, the Gatto, the Gettino Mar Mardietto. No, that can't be right. I apologize, I have crap at sounding, pronouncing people's names. So, um, 
This is in response to the Korg post battery change procedure video I did in uh, uh, July 2018, just after I got my Korg Oasis. And uh, Gatino writes, please sir, is it possible before you change the battery to make a backup of all the internal hard disk? Thank you, greetings from Italy. Well, hello to Italy. I know I get quite a few people in Italy watch the channel because I get quite a few things that come in in Italian. Um, anyway, the answer is yes, of course you can. You can make a backup of the, of the internal hard drive. Um, but the thing about the Oasis um, and probably most modern synths are computer driven now, uh, is that because all the settings etc are now saved on on hard drive, excuse me, on hard drive and loaded in at the point you boot the synth up, you don't lose any. Uh, so when you go through the battery change procedure, it's normally a case of realigning the date and maybe a couple of other bits and bobs depending on which synth you're on, but you actually don't lose the data. It's not like this sort of thing like I've got sitting on the bench here. You know, if I took the battery out of this, any uh, presets that are on it would just be gone, bang. Um, because that was the technology of the day. And I can't remember when this synth was, was built. I haven't done very much research on it. Um, just by the way, this is a JP8000 synth. If you can't see it on the camera, that's what this is, JP8000. Um, anyway, that's what you happen. Then doesn't happen with the Oasis. So there's no reason that you want to, uh, you need to back it up. I mean, it's good practice to every now and then back up all your hard fault creations uh, that you've put onto uh, these machines. And you can do that. Uh, you can actually burn them to, onto a CD, um, write them to a CD um, on the Oasis. So again, there's another route to that. Um, so in terms of doing a battery change, you don't really need to, need to worry about it. There is a procedure you need to do post battery change, which is what the video was all about. Um, and then once you've done that, it's relatively easy to open the machine up once you work out how, which screws to take out, because it's not obvious. Um, once you open it up, you then just take off the, um, there's like a shield, I think, if I remember correctly. You take it off and you can get to the battery and just hoof it out and put a new one in. And it's a standard RS2, uh, sorry, R, uh, CR2032 battery. So it's it's not a massive procedure on the on the Oasis. Um, in fact, actually thinking about my Oasis, I did mine in 218, it's now 2024. So my probably Oasis is, is coming up for another battery change. Good God, time has gone past when you're the driver of a train.